So we've learned two different normal curve functions with the calculator. We've learned normal CDF, which takes given x values and gives us areas. And then we've learned inverse norm, which takes the areas given to you and gives you the x values, the vertical bars. And this box right here can go right onto your note sheet for your test. There's no need to memorize it. You just have to know when to apply which one. So before we move on to the next batch of problems, which we really need for chapters 9, 10, 11, and 12, I just want to remind you about the z-score. Now the z-score is the standard normal score, and it's got a special distribution, which we learned about in section 3.4, namely that the center of the curve is mu zero, mu equals zero, and the standard deviation is one. Otherwise, it's just like any other normal curve. It's just that Z curves always have mean of zero, standard deviation of one. So we're going to find the following. We want to find the percentile rank of Z equals 1.89. So you can see right there, they're giving us a Z score, right? giving us a Z value, and they're asking us for a percentile rank. So this is going to be a normal CDF question that they're asking us here. All right, so let's draw a picture always. We have zero in the middle right there because that's the mean for a z always. The z curve is the curve that's going to have a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. 1. 1.89 then is almost two standard deviations away so it's way over here on the right hand tail. And I can see that the computer thinks that the area is 0. 0.9706 but I need to come up with that myself. So let me clear this out. I'm going to go second distribution. I want normal CDF the left hand edge of what I shaded is negative 1.e e, or negative 1e99. Remember, we learned that way back um, a couple videos ago that when you have negative infinity, that what you use is negative 1e99 in its place. Um, we learned it hold on, back here when we were dealing with left tail areas right there, negative 1 E99, and I wrote it right in the calculator instructions right here to stand for negative infinity when you're working with a left tail area. So if that's the case, oops, hold on, there's our problem, there it is. Oh. Okay, so my computer's being possessed. There we go. So I want normal CDF, negative 1 E99, comma, and the right-hand edge is 1.89, the mean is 0, and the standard deviation is 1. So that's what I'm going to put in the calculator, which is where I was before I went and did this. So negative 1e99, 1.89, 0, and 1, paste, enter. And I get 0 0.9706. Okay, now what is that in a percentile? So remember, percentile needs to be rounded. So this is the 97th percentile, which if you were going to write it in a symbol would be P97. There we go. All right, now let's do the next one. So we want the z-score for the 72nd percentile. There we go. There we've got it. So instead of being given a z-score of 1.89 like we were in the last problem and looking for that area of 0 0.9706, this time they're telling us that it's the 72nd percentile. So we know that the area beneath our value is 0 0.72. So that's why I said the given area is 0 0.72 and we're looking for this z-score. You want to find the z-score here. See that? When you find the z-score, that's an inverse norm problem. This one above, you want to find the percentile rank. That is a normal CDF question. So look for what you're looking to find. So we want to find a z-score. This is an inverse norm, inverse norm question. And we need the left tail area, which luckily for us is, us is what a percentile is. It's the left tail area. Then the mean is zero, standard deviation is one. It always is for a z-score. So let me go to the calculator and pick number three this time, 0 0.72, 0 and 1, enter, paste, enter, and I get 0.583 or so. 0 0.583. And that's our z-value, 0 0.583. So all, not even one standard deviation away. 
All right, now what about the next one? Let me find that part. All right, so here's a picture. So we have 1.3 over here on the right, and I've shaded to the right from that. And then I have negative 2.1 over here on the left, and I've shaded to the left of that. So I want the probability, capital P right there is standing for probability. So I'm supposed to be finding probability, that means I'm going to need normal CDF. Now remember, normal CDF is always left to right. But the issue here is that I could do two separate pieces because I have two separately shaded tails. But what I could do instead is find the central area. The central area, according to my computer, is 0.8853, but let's prove it. That would be normal CDF, negative 2.1, comma, 1.3, 0, and 1. So that'll be that white region in the middle. So second distribution, normal CDF, negative 2.1, oops, clear, negative, that's this number, that button down there at the bottom, 2.1, comma, and then 1.3, 0, and 1. Paste. And you get 0.8853. So I get 0 0.8853. And that means that the area slash the probability, because when you find the area, you're finding the probability in the tails, is equal to 1 minus 0 0.8853, which would be 0 0.1147. And if you don't believe me, let me show it to you. 1 minus that answer is 0.1147. See right there. And technically, since those are approximations, I just um, put in some approximation symbols for them and circled the answer. All right, now D is a big, big deal in chapter nine, so let's make sure we cover it really carefully. I want the Z scores, there's two of them, that are going to cut off the middle 90%. So let me go draw you a picture of that. Okay, so here's the picture. Now, again, we're assuming symmetry on these ones when we talk about the middle 90%. So if the middle is 90%, that's 0.9. And remember, the entire curve makes 1. So the two tails together would be 1 minus 0 0.9, which would be 0 0.10 or 10%. All right, so that's the two white tails, the white tail over here on the left and the white tail over here on the right. Okay, so then what is each tail individually? Each tail would be 0 0.10 divided by 2 because there's two of them and they're evenly distributed, which would be 0 0.05 for each tail. So let me show you this clear. 1 minus 0 0.9 is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 divided by 2 is 0 0.05. So that's each tail. Let me put those values in there. All right, so I have those areas both placed in there. All right, now that I know that, I can use that to find each of the values. And honestly, once you find one, you kind of find the other because they'll be the same value since zero is the middle line. Since zero is your central line, if you find one to be 1.6, for example, you'll find the other one to be negative 1.6. So let me just show you the left z-score. That would be found with using inverse norm and then left tail area, 0 0.0501. 0, All right, so let me do that with the calculator. So clear. So second distribution, number 3, 0 0.050 0 and 1. And negative 1.645 is right there. All right, now the right Z, we actually already know it because it must be the positive of the negative or the left value. So this must be Z is approximately, oops, I should have put Z here. Z is equal to, all right. Now you could just know that it's positive 1.645, but if you want to prove it to yourself, just for the heck of it, what would be the left tail area? Well, it'd be 0.95 now because you want that whole gray region plus that 0.05. All of that is to the left of this value over here, this right-hand value. So you do 0.945 and that would get you positive 1.645. And if you don't believe me, you can double check it. Second distribution, number three, 0.950 and one. And there it is, positive 1.645. 
but you don't have to go to all that trouble if you don't want to because once you found one with a z curve you found the other since the z curve has zero in the middle and I just typed that up right here. We didn't need to bother with that second calculation. Since the mean is zero, that's your middle line. Once we know one z value, we know the other z value is the same, but with the opposite sign, the same number, but with the opposite sign, as in if one is positive, one is negative. All right, now this is a really important problem for chapter nine. Let me write that up somewhere. There we go, I put it right up at the top. Important for chapter nine, this one is. So now let's look at the last bit, which is the critical value score. And this is an idea that's really important for chapter 10. All right, so we want to look at this definition. A critical Z value is Z sub alpha. It looks like an A, but it's actually the Greek letter alpha, kind of an A with a little extra cursive in it. It's the Z score such that the area under the standard normal curve to the right of that Z alpha is alpha. This will be an extremely important definition to us from chapter nine onward. So let's just kind of look at it for a second. We have this normal curve already drawn here. And according to them, the Z alpha is the critical value such that the area to the right of that score is alpha. So let me label these just a little bit. This 0 0.1 here, that's alpha. And this 1.282, that's Z alpha. There, now I've relabeled both parts. So you can see that this area is alpha, that's 0.1, and the z-score that marks it off, that's 1.282. So alpha equals 0 0.1, that's alpha right there, and then z-alpha is equal to 1.282. So the question becomes, how do I find those two values if they weren't given to me already ahead of time, like they were in this problem? And the answer is you would use inverse norm, right? So you're looking for a Z. I want to find Z sub 0 0.02. That's the symbology for it. So what that means is that alpha equals 0 0.02. This is the area in the right tail by definition. So the area in the right tail is 0 0.02. And again, this is really important stuff for later on. So the area in the right tail is 0 0.02. So I'm looking for a z-score that has area in the tail of 0 0.02. So remember that the area in the right tail, excuse me, area in the right tail of 0 0.02. This means that the area in the left tail is 0 0.19 or excuse me, 0 0.98. That's 1 minus 0 0.02. There we go. I got to type in 1 minus 0 0.02, which is 0 0.98. So that's this area all the way over here on the left. Let me write that in. There we go. So now I've got the left area is 0.98. If you wanted to know the left area on this one up here was 0 0.9, that way they'd add up to 1, 0 0.9 and 0 0.1. So I would use that and I would use inverse norm. So I'd say inverse norm 0 0.98, 0, 1. Let me grab the calculator, clear, distribution, number 3, 0.98, 0 and 1, paste, enter, and I get 2.054. And there we have it. So Z sub 0.02 is the inverse norm of 0.98 with 0 and 1 as your mean and standard deviation. And that means that the value is about 2.054. All right, we're all done with that. That's going to come back to haunt you all over the place in chapters 9, 10, 11, and so on. And then the middle 95% one that I showed you up here, that's going to come back to bite you again in chapter 9 and chapter 11. So both these two calculations, make sure you really know how to do well using either normal CDF or inverse norm. Actually, this one uses inverse norm, and so does this one with the calculator.